Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing yet another edition of the bi-weekly wishlist or washout. If you're new to my channel or if you're not seen the series before, what I do is every other Wednesday I go through all the new makeup releases that I see on Instagram and I decide if I'm going to be adding anything to my wishlist over everything's a total washout. I have to say, I think it's been a little bit slower for new releases recently, so I'm not sure how much we're going to have to go through today, but still excited as always to mostly probably talk some shit about some new releases. I am wearing, I don't know if you've noticed, uh, some more dramatic lashes today. I was actually sent some lashes from Cavalli Lash in PR and I'm testing them out and I specifically really wanted to try out their colored lashes. This is actually their sunset pair of lashes and it's, it's like a pink lemonade dream. So <laughs> I had a lot of fun doing this. I am filming a full video, but it doesn't take me a couple of weeks, you know, to finish it. I started filming it a little while ago um, with like my first impressions of all the lashes. And then I'm going to come through once I've fully tested all of them and done several full day wear tests with my final thoughts. So that video doesn't take a little bit longer, but I'm excited to try these out because they're definitely unique, at least to me. I don't think I've ever actually worn colored lashes before. So this is new. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think of it down below. All right, so before we jump into the new makeup that I saw on Instagram, I kind of wanted to bring this up real quick. I get um, the Ulta catalog in the mail still. Uh, they give you coupons and everything, and I do like to just like flip through and see what's on sale, what's new, because sometimes there are just new things that fly in under the radar and like you see them in here. And what I really wanted to sh talk about, because I honestly haven't had this brand on my brain since the last time all the shit went down and I did a live stream talking about it. This is Diva Curl. So apparently Diva Curl is completely reformulating, rebranding, look at the new packaging and coming out again. Now I have to say, they must be struggling. So many people had issues with their hair after using Diva Curl products, myself included. And it, it took me way too long to figure out it was actually the Diva Curl products that were like ruining my scalp. If you want to know the details of like everything that happened and Diva Curl's response and a bunch of bigger YouTubers and people and influencers that were coming out saying that their hair was basically ruined by Diva Curl products, I'll have that linked up above. I think it was like right before COVID hit. I think it was in like that January, December timeframe. Uh, of late 2019, early 2020, when all of this went down. Um, but ever since then, a lot of people have been boycotting Diva Curl, not using their products, not letting it touch their hair. Um, so I know they must be hurting in order to do this, pull out a full page showing off their new reformulation. So interesting to see that they're actually trying this. Um, I have to say, for how much they cost and what they did to my hair and my scalp, I will never ever touch a Diva Curl product again. So first and foremost, I have to talk about this. Teresa is Dead collabed with Lethal Cosmetics to come out with Lethal is Dead. And this palette, I have to say, I already bought it. It's pretty cute. I have to say, I'm just, I was really more curious about Lethal Cosmetics as a whole because I love Teresa's channel. I've been subscribed to her since she had like 10,000 subscribers. She's awesome. And uh, I remember she just always talked amazing about Lethal Shadows. Um, only thing is, I guess, I, I, couldn't find out exactly, but I think they're based overseas because the shipping, after the shipping for this palette was ridiculous, unfortunately. Uh, it cost like almost half the price of the palette itself was just, was just for shipping on top of it. So we'll see. I'm going to do a full review of this palette once I get it and I'm going to include shipping times, the cost and everything, uh, but it's going to be my first time trying Lethal Cosmetics Shadows, their formula. So I'm excited about that. Um, if there's any specific videos you guys want to see, let me know down below. According to the order, I haven't gotten a tracking number yet, but they said it should hopefully get it by the end of the next week. So we'll see if I get the palette, how quickly it comes, you know. Um, but I'm excited because I actually, I really like the, the colors here. They're honestly a little brighter than I kind of thought they would be coming from Teresa, but it looks cute. It would not be a B-Wow without a color pop release. Yeah. Uh, so this is called the Cabana Club Collection. And to be quite honest, I just, I really don't care. <laughs> Yeah, I've sw I swear I've seen the same palette at least three times for them in the last couple of months. Um, they're coming out with blush sticks, which actually, if I were buying from ColourPop, those would actually look pretty cute. But I've never had any luck with, like, cream products from ColourPop, so. Mm. And their liners, honestly, I have not used any other liner really other than like those nyx epic ink liners since i've tried them they're amazing like i'm wearing it in my waterline right now i love them i have them in like eight different colors now and i want more <laughs> so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and say it's a pass for me on this new cabana whatever i think it's an ulta exclusive 
So KKW Beauty is coming out with lip lacquer pots. Honestly, they look like color correctors, but they're they're lipsticks, but they're in a pot. Um No, thank you. No. $18. So we're getting some sneak peeks at the Kylie Cosmetics rebranding. So it looks like they're sticking with the name Kylie Cosmetics. I wasn't sure if they were going to actually change the name of the brand. I wasn't sure. I'm really not sure about what's happening like on the back end. Uh, I think there's like a copyright issue, which is why they had to like sell off their remaining stock. I'm not 100% sure though. I haven't actually researched it, but I wasn't sure if they're going to change the name of the brand. Um, but looking at it, it looks like it's still going to be Kylie. They released pictures of what the new lip kit products are going to look like um and like i think these are eyeliners i have to say again i would not buy any other eyeliners because i found an amazing formula and i don't need these especially because i know these are going to be expensive yeah so we'll see it's going to be interesting to see if they're going to like re-release the eyeshadow palettes or come out with new eyeshadow palettes because i have to say i actually do have a few eyeshadow palettes from kylie that i really really like so kindness vegan beauty with kindness and vegans and beautiful vegan kind people I need to think of some more jokes. <laughs> the beautiful vegan people that you would see doing kind things at farmer's markets. Farmer's market, beautiful, vegan, beauty, friendly. <laughs> so it looks like that they're making room on the display and along with the liquid gel blushes, which, you know, I have to say, I really want to try. I've not tried one of those yet. I really want to pick one up. They're coming out with liquid gel contours, which I have to say, I don't think I've ever used a liquid contour. I don't know how that would work on my complexion or just with me and the way that my skin is. So yes, I don't, I don't know if I would pick up a contour. I definitely would do a blush. A blush, mm, not a highlight. Yeah, I really like liquid and cream blushes. Not so much the same for contours and highlights. So I don't know. I don't know. Ooh, so Fenty is coming out with a new shade of the Gloss Bomb, and it looks to be like a very, very hot pink. It's very cute, but I don't think I would wear hot pink gloss enough to like actually purchase this, but it, it does look very, very cute. Ah, another new palette collection. Not even just a new palette. It's like a whole collection from ColourPop. This is the Lush Life Collection, which I have to say, you know, I don't understand the palette. Like that little quad in the middle with the greens and the blues, make that the whole palette. That would have been gorgeous. I would have considered it. That with the packaging and everything? Mm. I mean, swatched out, they look decent, but still, it's just like, yeah, right. It also has some cheek dews, serum blushes, and some uh, let's see, luxe glosses, cheek dew serums, and cream gel liners. Meh, meh, meh. <laughs> ah, so in addition to that other new gloss bomb, it looks like Fenty is coming out with a limp, limp, a lip plumping gloss. I don't know why it's so hard for me to say, but this is called the Gloss Bomb Heat, and it's a hot cherry. It's a mix of pepper and ginger root that instantly stimulates and plumps for juicy lips. I've never been like a huge fan of lip plumping glosses. I feel like I never really needed it. I feel like my lips are a decent size for my face, so I've never wanted to make them bigger or smaller. Um, but it's interesting. Interesting to see from them. What do you think? Have Do you guys use lip plumping glosses, and what do you like about them? So I guess Tarte still does their Tartlet palette, and they just came out with a new one. This is the Tartlet Juicy palette, which I have to say, what's juicy about this? <laughs> like when I think of like a juicy palette, I don't think rose, right? Ro I wouldn't describe a rose as juicy, okay? I would describe like watermelon, maybe like a, a red and green and I don't know, pink and green palette, but like don't get this like I want to I want to be a fly on the wall of like their marketing meetings or their development meetings I need to know how the hell they come up with these like it, it has to take skill and talent to make something so boring right it can't just be like flu like fluke after fluke right right it's $39 this this right here is $39 Ooh, okay. <laughs> mm. 
No. Okay. So I have to say, I don't get anything. Honestly, by itself, it's like a decent rose palette. I've got these shades 10 times over in my collection, but looking at it by itself, if this had been marketed as like a, a rose bridal palette, I'd be like, oh yeah, that makes sense, you know? But juicy? I'm just, I'm just confused. <laughs> Oh, I guess Chanel is celebrating 100 years of Chanel number no. 5. So they're releasing a body oil, bath tablets, body cream, body lotion, and shower gel in the Chanel number no. 5 scent. Um, I have to say, packaging, freaking on point. I actually really, I thought the packaging is adorable. But I have to say, um, I have the dossier dupe for Chanel number no. 5, and I'm good. Like, the thing's $30, it's a full bottle, I'd last... It lasts me a good long time. It smells just like Chanel Number no. 5. I've gotten like one mini bottle of it in my life. Um, the Dossier one is a lot cheaper and just as good. <laughs> so that being said, I'm not going to buy any of these because they don't even have prices here. So I know, I know, no, no, that this is going to be expensive. Like, I don't need this. I don't. Mm -mm. Okay, so I have to say, this is like really, really random, but... Madison Beer, Vanessa Hudgens, and Dr. Karen K are coming out with a skincare brand. Honestly, skincare, the skincare community has been very odd. I actually, I don't think I ranted about Hiram's skincare brand. I might just pull that up and do that one next. But this is just so freaking random, to be quite honest. I think I've made my uh, stance on celebrity skincare brands known, honestly. Celebrities have no, I don't care how many doctors you consult and whatnot, it's clearly a money grab when it's a celebrity that comes out with either a makeup brand or a skincare brand, but more so for skincare or birdseed, aka supplements, because like there's so much more formulation and like there's I guess I'm trying to make the, the, the separation between like makeup that you might just wear on one part of your skin or not even on your skin. It could be like on top of foundation only for the most part, as opposed to something that you specifically put on your skin, like to sink into your skin and work with your skin or even more so if you're ingesting like a supplement, like there's a big difference there. Um, I'm not a huge fan of uh, celebrities thinking they're dermatologists and trying to p push that idea forward just so they can make more money off of a brand. Like they don't need that money, first of all. Second of all, I know they're cutting corners because if, if you're a brand that is just that hyper money grubby, it's not gonna be like amazing quality, right? Like, mm. so I wouldn't trust most celebrity skincare brands on my skin, just as a rule, because I know they're just doing it for the money. But this is just the most random group of like people. <sighs> And it kind of came out of nowhere. Anyway, um, they already have like a moisturizer and these moisturizers are all $26. They have three moisturizers. They have cleansers that are $24. They have serums that are $30. Yeah, this, I don't know. This one just kind of confuses me because I'm just, it's just odd to me. Like why, why are they suddenly, why, why this, you know? It's just because it's, it's what's currently trending right now, right? Okay. So next, since I mentioned it, I want to talk about Hiram skincare brand. I have to say, I am not a fan of kind of the, the fact that like random, and I'm going to go ahead and be a slightly generic here, but whenever a white guy comes in to a space that's not automatically dominated by white men, they have that glass escalator effect, right? Where just by like being present and being decent at a thing, they can kind of shoot straight to the top with while there are a lot of other women specifically, specifically women of color that are more talented and have uh, put more effort into like their work or their art and they don't get nearly as much recognition. That's a fact. So when I saw people like Brad Mondo, like High Rum, like even to an extent the Welsh twins come in and like immediately kind of shoot to the top of their respective little centers whether it be skincare makeup or hair care it always rubs me the wrong way so i haven't i watched a few of hiram's videos back when he like kind of first became popular on youtube um now and i think he's blown up on tiktok where i think most of his following comes from now but because of that i was never really like totally on board with like his channel and whatnot i also felt like he was being a little super preachy about certain things and he kept calling himself a skincare specialist but from what i've seen i think he only really works or worked at like a skincare counter so 
That being said, he came out with a brand, and I guess the brand is a parent, a child brand from the Inky list. And I have to say, I'm not super, super up to date with all of the different skincare influence. I know there's been a lot of drama in skincare land. I, so I'm not totally up to date on like if there's anything fishy or up with the Inky list, but the Inky list is a brand. And I guess a brand that Hiram promoted a lot of. Um, so his brand is a child of that brand. And his brand is really being promoted as super clean, super great for the environment. And I have to say, if you haven't seen like his skin, the launch video for his brand, go take a look because it's honestly kind of icky in the way that um, he's trying to like, like save the people kind of thing. Okay, how do I explain this? Basically, it's him talking about his skincare brand as if he's saving the world. And I'm not even kidding. Like, go watch the video. It's like it's a voiceover talking about how clean, sustainable, and great these skincare products are. But you're over. He's overlaying it with video of like African people like getting water from wells, and it's it's this very icky like kind of white savior complexness. And I have to say, at the end of the day, it's a damn skincare brand. You're not gonna save the world with skincare. Okay, so all of that was just like super, super icky. It gave me like white savior. It gave me weird missionary, like missionary trips, not missionary trips, <laughs> mission trips. Ooh, ooh, those are not the same thing. It gave me weird mission trip vibes. Like uh, anyway, um, so yeah, that not a fan, not a fan. And uh, it feels like he's way, I mean, this is my opinion at this point. I think he's way too full of himself. And also, I don't want to try any of the products. <laughs> also, I just want to say before we move on, the prices for Selfless by Hiram, Hiram also expensive. $24 for a serum, $30 for a serum, uh, cleanser for $20, moisturizer for $26. Like most of my skincare at this point is all drugstore and almost everything is like under $15. So... I don't think you need to spend that much money for an influencer brand. Like, I don't think it's necessary. Ooh, so Morphe is coming out with a tinted moisturizer. Does anyone remember how great Morphe's foundation release went? It was actually really funny seeing people that shill Morphe constantly try to make that foundation look good because it looked terrible. You could tell on camera it looked really bad and they were doing their best to like be like, oh, it's applying, it's applying great. And oh, look at this. It's doing this great. And you could just tell like it's, it's not, it's not. Um, while I love tinted moisturizers, I of course will not be trying this out. Um, yeah. yeah, that's about it. They only have 15 shades. No, yeah. and it's eighteen dollars each. So you know I won't touch anything from Morphe with the ten foot pole, but nah. okay. So this looks pretty. I know I have these shades in my collection, but this this looks very very pretty. This is from M Cosmetics, and this is the new Divine Skies eyeshadow palette, Venetian Rose. It just looks really pretty. I like the like the fact that it's in like a little circle, like a little pie with little slices cut out into it. And I liked the the shape of the compact. It just looks really cute, honestly. Like I know I have these shades. I know I don't need this, but it looks very cute. So it's actually tagged in this one. It looks like Woma Beauty is coming out with a sister brand. And it's specifically an inclusive sister brand an ingredient conscious, eco-friendly, vegan, cruelty-free brand that's centered around care, skin care, self-care, soul care, and care for our planet. Okay, so it's skin care. Uh, okay, because I was going, oh no, no, it's not just skin care, there's got a mascara. Okay, so it looks like it's a combination of like skin care and makeup, which, mm, meh, meh. I'm also confused as to why they need to have a sister brand to do this and they couldn't just put it out under their own regular Woma brand. I don't know. I think it has something to do with um, whether how good, I guess, how good the collection goes. Um, but yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to try any of this. Oh my God. This is the most th ridiculous thing I think I've ever seen. I guess Hourglass is going to come out with single eyeshadows and palettes you can create your own palettes out of. But look at how these shadows are. First of all, you're not even getting a full square of shadow. They cut it off. 
So how many grams of product are you getting there? Second off, look at how big that packaging is for the single shadow. That's huge for a single shadow. I, I don't even like using my ColourPop Super Shock shadows because that packaging is so annoying. Imagine that. I would, say, I would say the palette itself looks kind of cute, but I have, to, I have to see it, like the full thing, because I don't like the way those pans are. That's the weirdest way to like have an individual pan of eyeshadow, isn't it? Ah, huh. that's odd. Oh no, I like it. <laughs> Yikes. All right, so Laura Lee, Los Angeles, is coming out with a new palette called Candy Skies. And uh, I love how it looks. <laughs> It's like this beautiful like pastel kind of pseudo rainbow palette. The swatches look gorgeous. Oh my god, and I love the packaging. Ah, uh, oh my god. No, I love this palette. <laughs> okay, so for me and the way that I like to organize or like to, uh, how do I put this? Um, I do not support with my dollar any of the big drama-filled beauty gurus. So none of them that were in Dramageddon and none of them up there. Not shaming you if you do, but that's just a stance I took a while ago about not supporting toxic people. I actually did a video about it. I'll throw it up in the cards if you missed it. So I won't buy this, but I want a dupe. Like I, I need something similar to this. Like I've got a smaller like Kylie version, but no, these are like jewel tones. They're not super pastel. They look jewel. Oh my god, those, I can't get over the swatches. Those swatches are beautiful. No. <laughs> if anyone knows of anything that's kind of similar to this, let me know, please. And let's finish on this one. So e.l.f. is coming out with putty bronzers. So they had the putty primer, which did really well. They then came out with putty blushes, which that makes sense. Like an ice cream blush makes cute. Makes cute. Makes sense. And it's cute. Uh, I have not picked up any yet, but I do want to pick up some of those blushes. They look adorable. Now they're coming out with putty bronzers. Now I have to say, cream bronzers are, well, that's my reminder to send my shopping list to Alvin. But uh, what was I saying? Oh, yes. So cream bronzers, uh, I know they work for a lot of people. I know um, a lot of people love, what's that Chanel one? The Tan Day Chanel, I think, was the bronzer, the cream bronzer that everyone like lost their shit over a while ago. Um, I don't really have a lot of cream blonde bronzers. If anything, I think I just have like one in my collection. But I have to admit, I'm kind of curious. Like imagine a full putty face. That sounded weird. Imagine a full face using mostly like ColourPop putty products. Not ColourPop, ooh, e.l.f. Ooh, it's been a long day. Imagine a full face with e.l.f. putty products. I'm kind of curious, I have to say. So I don't know, I, I'm not gonna run out and buy this immediately, but I have to admit, I'm curious and I kind of want to just like keep this on my radar. Okay, and that is it for this edition of the BeWow. As always, let me know down below what you thought of these products, if there's anything you're excited for, or if you think they're main mainly overrated. Thank you guys for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.